says everybody learning yes sir all right so i'm very grateful and thankful for my fellow technicians that are with me during this session is they've all agreed to let us do this on facebook live many of you probably remember that we often do the uh, demonstration with the sports chamber and when we're doing the demonstration we're talking about how, how the head setting is affected what are we doing when we're changing the head setting on an oil burner is we're actually controlling how we're changing the primary secondary and tertiary air when do we add guys when do we add tertiary air we up the firing when we rate. increase the firing rate right so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start doing that we'll get this fired up i have it the head setting is at a zero right now i believe we have a 30 second delay that one delay <laughs> All right, probably a lot easier to see. We want to give a shout out to our other instructor, Mike Elmer, who cleaned the quartz chamber for me so we can actually see the flame. I smoked it up the other day accidentally. Okay. <laughs> so, Mike Elmer, kudos to you, brother. All right, so if everyone, other than my generous cameraman, which you can actually just stay there, but if everyone wants to, remember what I asked you is to just focus your attention on the retention head and I want you to look with the primary ear, the secondary ear, and around the head, which would be the tertiary ear. Look at that right now while it's at a zero. Yeah. All right. Everybody's had the opportunity to see that? Okay. I'm going to go ahead, and you'll probably see, even as I start adjusting this, You'll see the characteristics of the flame start to change. Let me know when it starts changing. Started. Started. I've only gotten to about a one and a half to a two on the head setting. I'm going to take it to a four. You should see a significant difference. And now I'd like you to look again, primary, secondary, tertiary. But notice what's different around the tertiary ear. You should see a dark circle all the way around that retention head because now we're allowing a lot more air to come around the head instead of through the head. So, okay. it, 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 it is. So notice he, he said how it's hitting that back wall. Again, I can't emphasize enough that this demonstration has really helped technicians understand when you're doing the head setting, why are we doing it, and what effects does it have on it? You would never just move that head forward just for the heck of it for an adjustment. This currently has a .8580 nozzle in it, right? The only time I would consider moving that head forward is if I looked in my spec guide, because I had to go from a .85, maybe to a one gallon an hour, because I needed to increase the BTUs of the appliance. I'm gonna find that I'm probably gonna have to change my head setting and more than, more than likely, I'm gonna be adding more tertiary air. Obviously, I'm gonna be adjusting my ear band as well, and then I'm gonna take a combustion test to confirm that everything's done correctly. Daryl Fern says, show what happens when you pull a vacuum on the oil supply. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> paper and flats. <laughs> That'll be $1,000. So, uh, who was it? Daryl Fern. Daryl, brother, hey, thanks for watching this and asking the question. Brother, unfortunately, on the demonstrator, I don't have a valve on this that I can quickly create a restraint. Actually, you know what? Let me try this. Let me try it. I don't have a valve. No, it's not even squeezing it, Daryl. It's not. Usually on the burners when I'm doing this with the guys, I actually have a valve where I can start closing it up and creating a restriction. So I apologize. In this demonstration, I'm not able to show anybody. We really just wanted to cover the primary, secondary, tertiary air. So that's it, guys. What do you think? Awesome. All right. Okay.